now, ladies and gentlemen of the Audio Radiance, the big broadcast of 1976 brings you another mirthful story of showbiz as out of the past comes... <laughs> Yes, 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 that familiar musical theme reminds everyone in America that it's time for your favorite radio favorites, as those great stars of Paranoid Pictures recreate their original roles as themselves. George and Lily Tirebiter and their Hollywood Madhouse. Hollywood Madhouse is brought to you each and every week by 1940's favorite shade of pink, Party Pink. And for wide eyes, party lines, the shades that go with the snoods you love to wear. Party pink million dollar lip coat and ready to wear party lines by Mark's International Toiletries. Makers of poo poo shampoo for your hair and amazing new Glamorama soap for your hands. And now let's all get off at Hollywood's most famous home address just around the corner from Sunset and Vine where we join Lily and Porcelain in the Tyrabiter kitchen. Why that toast attack me like a natural man? Whoa! Anyway, that's right, Miss Lily. Rufus says they're gonna fix me up with a singing job on television real soon. Then I can quit this slave labor. Really, Porcelain, television. Television is about as impractical a fantasy as, well, as flying to the moon. No, ma'am. Rufus says he knows a man that knows a man that knows a man that's working on a colored TV. <laughs> yeah. And he says if there ain't no war, we're all gonna have a big one in the living room in just a couple of years. Well, I don't know if I want one. Thing would only be another piece of furniture for George to burn to bits with those awful cigars of his. I get it. Hollywood Madhouse, where the stars hang the head, postling the maid speaking. No, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Tybot is up sawing woods. Who is this? Mr. Metro B. Mayor. And you want Mr. T to play a, 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 a butler in Gone with the What? Oh, when? Say, that reminds me, Mr. Mayor, if you still got an opening for Aunt Pity Patty, I... Hello? Hello? I could outact that butterfly McQueen any day. <laughs> Porcelain, dear, be sure and write down that message, won't you? You know, George can never remember anything unless okay. it's written down. Good morning, Porcelain. Hello, Mrs. Typewriter. Uh, Rita, dear, how many times do I have to tell you, hmm? It's Tire Biter. Oh, yes, I can't seem to remember anything. Mm. Oh, what a heavenly morning. I've been on call since six. Well, how was the ranch market, Miss Rita? Oh, porcelain, it was fabulous. Paranoid was shooting a jungle movie in the tropical fruit and fresh vegetable section. Yeah. Skipper Pie Face and Dottie Sarong in Moonlight and Nazis. It was so inspirational. The scene started with Dottie getting dressed in a gorgeous costume made entirely of Victor. Cabbage. Well, that sounds pretty, uh, dangerous. Oh, it was. No sooner does she wander away from the native village than a whole battalion of German saboteurs lost in the South Seas open fire. Bang, bang, rat a tat tat Dottie screamed. Ah! Lord. They keep coming, bang, bang! Lily, Lily, what's going on down there? It won't be my fault if you're late for your broadcast, George. Go on, Rita, dear. Did the director see you? I tried to show him as much as I could, but he was so busy. The Huns took Dottie hostage and tied her up to a huge rotating barbecue spit, shaped like an iron swastika. Then the German commander, played by Eric von Hitler, takes a white-hot cattle prod out of the fire and... Zo, my little Jadzi. See how you like this. Oh, no, no. Ah! Lily, Lily. Ah! Ah! Lily, Lily, porcelain, what in blazes is going on here? Nothing is going on, George. Rita is telling us about a film. Oh, I see. Being in radio, I'm sure it's quite beneath you. <laughs> Why don't you just eat your breakfast now that you've joined us? You'll be late as usual if you continue to dawdle. Oh, George. very well, Lily. I'll do the yes. oh, I'll, I'll get it, I'll get it. Yes? Who? Uh, no, no one named Eldridge Moonpie lives here. <laughs> Well, 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 yes, of course, I'm sure. Uh, at least, uh, Lily, have you picked up another stray? Moon pie. Yes. 
anyone with a name like Moon Pie must be a friend of yours, uh, George. Uh, uh, yes. Well, listen here, sir. I... He hung up on me. Well, now, ladies, could we please try to keep the phone clear? Because I'm expecting a very important long-distance call from my agent. Oh, so everybody in this madhouse, Mr. T. Oh, by the way, you know, you already had two calls this morning. That's oh, the head oh, of a really? big studio call. Big uh, studio? My goodness. Well, 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 which studio was it? Well, I wrote it down on the shopping list yeah, here. It, shopping it seemed list. to me like it was the Rex DuBose Continental Studio of French Nude Figure Art. Oh. <laughs> my, my. You know, they said they needed an old man. Oh, those white slavers. You know, you make one little mistake in this town, and it's all over. Well, what was the other call? Well, let me see. Uh, lettuce, coffee, glamorama soap. No, 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 no. Here it is. The mayor called. Yeah, oh, oh. He needs a butler because he's off to the Windy City. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. It is odd. I don't even know the mayor. Well, well how about some breakfast before I leave for the studio? <laughs> Porcelain will try and fix you something, George. Oh, come along, Rita, dear. I want to show you how I learned to walk when I was a vandal's girl. Oh, Mrs. Timebuyer, that looks so hard. <laughs> You're going to eat or not, Mr. T? Well, I suppose so. Timebuyer, really. Uh, could you tell Cook that I'd like um, two eggs? Uh, one cooked three minutes, and uh, the other three and a half minutes. Um, uh, served in a small bowl, not a cup. And I'd like um, half a piece of buttered Melba toast, uh, a dish of pitted prunes, uh, four ounces exactly of orange juice, and a side order of bacon cooked very crisply. Are you sure that's what you want? I am positive. Okay. Adam and Eve on a wrap. Sink them. <laughs> Why do I fall for that every single week? <laughs> oh, says I'll get it. Hello, yes? Rita Monroe. Well, she, she, she was here fighting Nazi spies just a moment ago. You met her at the ranch market. Yes, this morning. Well, she's staying here temporarily, I hope. Uh, do you mind, sir? I'm expecting a long distance. But my wife takes these creatures in. I don't know if she tap dances. Good. <laughs> Why, sir? This is turning into a home for the congenitally unemployed. <laughs> ah, speaking of unemployed, Georgie, uh -huh. say good morning to America's favorite out-of-work comic, Red Bunyan. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know, I know. You just flew in from Reno, and boy, are your jokes tired. You know, George, I just flew in from Reno. Oh. <laughs> How about this one? Listen, two Irishmen are walking down the street, right? Ah, so Patty says, uh, listen, Mickey, me boy, uh, say, George, you can eat those prunes. Okay, oh, no, I, no, I, 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 you'll be leaving for the show anyway. Well, I'm expecting an important call, and I'm... Mr. T, I'm, Mr. T, Mr. T, the cook done uh, sunk these eggs too deep, so I'll have... Well, good morning, Mr. Bunyan. Well, hi, Bart. I'll Bart. just have to give uh, this breakfast to my favorite funny man. Oh, 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 here oh, you are, oh, honey. Oh, <laughs> Hey, you sure know how to make a crying clown smile. Oh, 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 oh. Right, right. Well, no, just no, just... forget about the oh. eggs, porcelain. I'll, I'll have some baked ham with a little dressing on the side. Well, anything you say, Mr. T. Say, cook, Virginia, mayo. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Hey, I'll bet that'll wow him downstairs. Listen, I have a great little act, George. Listen, we open right. Two elephants come down from the ceiling. Right? George, right. George! George, you simply must find something for Sir Lionel to do on one of your immortal theater broadcasts. Yes. His yeah. great talents have been hidden from a legion of admirers for too long. Yes, they have, ever since he fell off the wagon in the third act of Hamlock, Prince Hamlock. of Venice. Hamlock! A, a vast charlatan! Uh, yes. It was slanderous rumor! A drab-faced dame! All triple-tongued and dithyrrhabed! Dithyrambic, that they bring myself a son. Fie upon these miscreants! Uh, what's for breakfast? <laughs> Yes, yes, 
yes, breakfast, so breakfast indeed. Well, what about six months of room and board? You've been sleeping on my couch in my study since New Year's. Some people would be proud to have an artiste of Sir Lionel's dimension as a guest in their humble home. Ah, madam, thy sweet words tinkle on the wind like little bells. <laughs> like little, little bells. Oh, you put things so poetically, Sir Lionel. Lionel, get your hand off my baked ham, you half-baked ham. He called you, he called you a half-baked ham. No, 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 to have something to eat or my stomach will rumble all during my broadcast. And, and it's hard enough to do justice to that supercilious juvenile every day without that. Radio. Yes. <laughs> Radio. <laughs> George, George, George. So unfitted for a true artist. And yet, as the immobile bard put it so nobly, in anything you want to, what is employment but a sad disgrace? <laughs> that I should concern me with its daily toil? Wherefore shall bloodless coinage recompense this awful talent? <laughs> <laughs> this awesome talent <laughs> has a panoply of kings fate herself like gleaming hyssop and fair eglantine shall open nether limbs and offer just rewards. <laughs> Sake, look here, porcelain. Just give me my two pieces of bacon and I'll eat them on the way. Anything you say, Mr. T. <sighs> Sign of frogs to travel. <laughs> you did it again. Mrs. Oh. Firefighter. A, a tire biter, you exercise in futility. The Bulgarian acrobatic troupe you found in the bus station last night? Uh, yes, dear. Bulgarian? Well, they just arrived with all their luggage. A circus tent and everything. Luggage? Circus tent? Why, why this is too much, too much. I told much. them they could put everything in the big hall closet. Hall closet? Oh, no. No, you have to stop them. Tell them they can't open that. George, you've done it again. I promise I'll straighten things up when I get home from the broadcast, Lily. Oh, I've got Nichevo, to... Nichevo, what? Madam Trang, what? bite you. My comrades and me were just moving a few things in. You know, little Tanya yes. is suffocating in the closet. <laughs> under the pile of golf club. What do we do? This is the last straw, Bulgarians and Russians. You're, you're all trying to drive me insane. <laughs> Oh, yeah, George, yes, I've got to tell you. Pass us two pieces of bacon, would you? Uh, 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 they're both in a light bowling alley right next door. I'm going to be the opening act in the lounge, you know? This place is getting real lively. Oh, no. I, I, I'm going to the studio. We'll return in a minute with Act Two of Hollywood Madhouse. You know, just being discovered by a studio talent scout isn't quite enough to pave a girl's road to fame and fortune. It takes long nights of hot work to learn the ins and outs. <laughs> to learn the ins and outs of Hollywood's casting couches. Isn't that right, glamorous Miss Rita Monroe? What? Oh, yes, Mr. Announcer. Rita is under terminal contract to esoteric pictures. <laughs> And they're the makers of Midnight in Kabluna with Nolan Lloyd and the international beauty Consuela Lamour. She's so beautiful, Mr. Announcer. I watched her every minute. What an excellent choice for director Spencer Bennett. Well, I know our audience will want to line up to see them together in It Rita. And that makeup Consuela wore in the dramatic underwater sequence. That underwater makeup, don't forget the shiny skin under that makeup, Rita. Scrubbed clean enough forever. And even the blazing Klieg lights with famous new Glamorama soap. How could I forget, Mr. Announcer? I use it myself because it's surely one way to get a job ahead of the other starlets. Good for you, Rita. <laughs> 
And we'll be looking forward to getting a fleeting peek at your ambitious face in your upcoming esoteric featurette, Sophomore Party Girls. Thank you, Mr. Announcer. <laughs> and don't you forget, ladies, even if you don't even go to the movies, get Glamorama Mild Skin Soap at your drugstore today, or your face will never forgive you. Act two of Hollywood Madhouse. Poor George Tirevider is late for his morning broadcast as usual. The red light is nearly on as he bursts into Studio A. Oh, oh, oh my goodness! My, where's my script? Oh, for Christ's sake! Are you ready, Mr. Tirevider? Okay, no rehearsal. Wait, 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 Calling Tom Edison! Calling young Tom Edison! We need your help! Repeat your help! This is Tom! I'm on my way! That, 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 that's right, girls and boys. America's immortal inventor hero is on his way again through the invisible power of radio. Stay alert now for the dangerous adventure of the gold brick robbery. <laughs> Tom Edison, electric detective, is brought to you daily except wash day by Tennessee Soft Coal. That's more heat to eat by for the average American family. And now, today's challenging adventure. We left Tom and his best pals, George and Tex, way up at the top of the 80-foot tower, chewing the fat and smoking ragweed cigars. And all of a sudden, Tom's almost girlfriend, Dot, climbs up the rope ladder and appears breathlessly in the doorway. So, when I saw the station master's little boy fall down on the tracks, well, golly, I, I just had to jump right in front of the train to save him. Wow! Golly! That sure was brave, Tom. Yeah. Tom? Tom? Oh, why, dash it all, Dot. I told you not to climb all the way up here by yourself. Well, you're just a girl and could easily get hurt. Oh, Tom, Tom, I tried to call you on the stock ticker, but the darn thing doesn't work. Well, I... And just... your electric pen still squirts ink all over. I've had technical problems. I've but... had to climb up to tell you. Yeah. There's been a big robbery at the downtown gold indicator company. Gosh, yes. that's a calamity. Yeah. Well, see here, gang, this is really serious. I'd better tell you all of what to do. Yeah, Tom, you better do that. Yeah, yeah hurry up, uh, Tom. What do we do? Uh, Can I climb down the rope ladder last? Sooner or later, in the battery room of the Gold Indicator Company on the north side of the city, a mature voice fades up. And so, Tom, that's it. The whole story. I understand completely, Mr. Gold. Three masked footpads burst up through the floor, kiboshed the night watchman, and made yes. off with our main battery. You said that. Without them... I'm afraid the hog and groat exchange will collapse within 24 hours. You know, Mr. Gold, someday I'm going to invent something that makes it unnecessary for people like you to have to repeat themselves. <laughs> you know, I'm going to call it the phonometer. Or, or, or the vocal engine. You couldn't sell a pie plate with a dumb name like that. That's right! Quiet, all of you. You know, I have only one good ear, and if I press it tightly against the floor, like this, I can hear the trains running deep in the coal train tunnels beneath the streets. The bandits must have gotten in through the ash removal chutes and taken those powerful batteries out just the same way. That sounds like better than just a good guess, Tom. What shall we do next? Well, <laughs> I mean to track these thieves down myself, sir. And to this end, I dedicate myself and my loyal friends here to the pursuit of power. Patent protected and, and armed with... the etheric force. Gosh, Tom! Gosh, Tom, don't you think things have gotten a little out of hand? Gee! Gosh, Tom, I don't think so. You can call me an ignorant dreamer and a humorous toaster, if you will. Poster, if you will, but eventually I will conquer even the powers of darkness. Well, come on, gang, back to the lab. Okay, let's go. You know, tomorrow means wash day again. So young Tom will, young Tom will be taking a day off to work on his latest invention, the muffle, <laughs> the muffle furnace. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
And speaking of wash day, you know, those black sheets and coke-stained suits and nostrils can come clean. <laughs> Well, the wonderful new use for petroleum called granulated detergent. You know, a river of suds will soon float away all the grime of your everyday life and send it right downstream to the limitless wide open sea. You know, when your grocer gets in his new supply of detergent, try some and see you'll wish you had clothes made from petroleum. <laughs> that right, little Tom? Uh, you bet, Mr. Announcer. And, and you know, pretty soon people are going to want all the coal and oil they can get just as soon as I invent something to use it for. <laughs> <laughs> you can take Tom's word on it, boys and girls, so light up and keep those lights on all over America, all over the world. And tune in again Tuesday for another adventure of Tom Edison, Electric Detective. <laughs> Propagator, that's, that's why, why he's, he's so, so mean. mean. Yes, yes. I don't understand that, George. It, these lines don't Rita, suit me. Rita, Rita is simply crushed at not being able to sing again this week, George. Oh, no, I can do it, Mr. Typewriter. I've been watching Betty Gray. Oh, Donald Bain. Donald Typewriter, what is this? Bain, Donald these Bain. lines that tell the, the fearsome ghosts ghost that never thing shall yield to finding which pull up their roots and weep. What is this? You wrote this, Typewriter, not Shakespeare. No, I don't know. Not Neil Morphy. Quiet! Quiet! Quiet. <clears throat> Fifteen uh, seconds. I'm, I'm, George? I'm, I'm ready. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go. Two broadcasts in quiet, the same day. Quiet, quiet. Patent absurdity. Five. Five. Four. Stupidest line. Yes, 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 yes. That familiar musical theme reminds everyone in America that it's time for your favorite radio favorites as those great stars of Paranoid Pictures continue to recreate their original roles of themselves in Hollywood Madhouse. Now, here's the star of our show, George Leroy Tirebiter. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you, Ed. Well, I see by the old clock on the wall that the wheel has spun around again, and we're right back where we started from. And it's a good thing, too, because I, uh, I see Grant and the boys in the band are ready for another number. So are we, Mr. T. So am I. <laughs> Way down yonder in New Orleans, in the land of dreamy scenes, there's a garden of Eden, that's what I mean. Those Creole faces with flashing eyes, softly whisper that tender slice. Won't you give your lady fair a little smile? They say, stop. You bet your life you'll linger there a little while. There is heaven right here on earth with your beautiful queen. When I'm younger in New Orleans. Oh, 
don't you give your ladies a smile. They say, stop, you bet your life you'll only go there on the wild. There is heaven right here on earth, we will give them a breeze. Way down yonder in New Orleans. Oh, thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Well, time has more than just caught up with us for this week, oh, this year, actually. Unless, of course, we can persuade uh, Cocktail to come back with a big closing number. It's all over, oh, Mr. T. <laughs> then, as Willie the Sheik once said, if music be the food of love, let's eat. We you know just what you mean. <laughs> all new preachers who delight in filling the dancing teachers. Let me tell you there are a lot of features of the dance that throw you through. Gates of heaven and its madness to be always sitting alone in sadness when you could be learning the steps of gladness. You'll be happy when you can do maybe six or seven. Begin today, you might find it nice. It's the quickest way to paradise. And when you practice, 